Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into MB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road, coming up tonight in news. The DNA won't fade away over the next five years. According to leader Branville McCartney, you'll see this interview only on one station. Cable and wireless gearing up to renegotiate with the government. A former city market employees threatened to picket downtown if they are not paid. Plus, new cellular phone packages to entice you to switch to postpaid. We've got those stories and so much more coming up. I'm Paige McCartney, and MB12 starts right now. Welcome once again to MB12. At least 11 people are dead and the death toll is expected to continue to rise after a vessel trying to leave the northern Bahamas and enter the United States went down at sea last night. So far, seven people have been found alive and police are today hoping to find additional survivors from the vessel that went down and waters off North Abaco. Information was still coming in up to news time, but MB12 can confirm that a 25-foot vessel with 28 people believed to be Haitian nationals, including five children, Children departed from Farm Hill near Treasure Key, Abaco at around 5 p.m. Sunday afternoon. Police say that vessel had engine trouble and started taking on water and sank near Crown Haven, Abaco at around 8 o'clock last night. And as we said, 11 people have been confirmed dead up to news time. And so far, police only have found seven survivors and are trying to locate the other passengers who some fear are dead. However, up to news time, like we said, the search continued. Police say that vessel was headed to the United States. However, there was no official response as police were not informed about the incident until today. We will, of course, keep you updated on this incident through the NassauGuardian.com and, of course, in tomorrow's edition of the Nassau Guardian. And in other news tonight, Free National Movement supporters have mixed views on whether Branville McCartney should return to the defeated party. The debate over whether the Democratic National Alliance leader should keep his party going or help to rebuild the FNM was reignited after FNM Chairman Charles Maynard said they would welcome him back. Well, McCartney says he's done with the FNM and would not return even if he were promised a leadership position. In an exclusive interview with MB12, the DNA leader says he's focused on his party's future. Here's Bonnie Toot. We've heard very little from Branville McCartney since his party's defeat in the May 7th general election. It's made some people question whether the Democratic National Alliance will still be around five years from now. Well, NB12 caught up with the DNA leader for his first real day back to work here at his law office on Village Road. He made it clear the DNA isn't going anywhere and there is no chance he will be returning to the free national movement. FNM Chairman Charles Maynard recently told NB12 that while the opposition does not plan to go on a mission to get McCartney back, it would welcome him back into the fold. The DNA leader says he's not interested. And we don't intend, and I don't intend, to return to the FNM. The FNM is no more. That is not the FNM that I was a part of. Uh, Mr. Ingram completely destroyed that. We believe that the DNA will, is a future for this country. Why would I go back to the FNM? I'm the leader of the DNA at this stage, although we, we intend to have a convention within the next few years. And of course, all, all positions become available. McCartney joined the FNM at age 21, but severed ties with the then governing party last year to form the Democratic National Alliance. The DNA received 13,000 votes in the general election. McCartney says some FNM supporters have blamed him for the party's loss. However, he says they need to point the finger at their former leader, Hubert Ingram. He's the leader. He takes the blame. I take the blame for um, not winning in the DNA. I take that blame. I take it all on my shoulders. The FNM needs to look to their leader, who made this a leadership race. A leadership race. All you could see all around this country <laughs> was Mr. Ingram's photos. All around. You still see him. And, um, you know, it's very, very sad because Mr. Ingram was a good prime minister, in my view. But there comes a time when it's time to go. And his time was up. His time was up two years before the election. 
The attorney says even before the general election, it was abundantly clear that the FNM would not be returned to office. However, he says he was hoping the new government would be the DNA, not the PLP. McCartney believes his party would have won at least a handful of seats if it had more money. He claims the DNA spent $1.8 million on its election campaign. The Green team won't be running a candidate in the North Abaco by-election, but McCartney says he is excited about the party's future. In fact, he says paid membership has grown considerably since the election. Right before the election, uh, when I say membership, I'm talking about paid members. Our paid membership was to the tune of about 10,500 or thereabouts. 10,500 paid members. Um, within the month since the election, we garnered uh, close to 1,200 more um, paid, paid in full <laughs> uh, members. I want to recount, man. I want to recount. Count it again, man. Count it again. <laughs> Though the DNA has been silent for the past month, McCartney says they will be much more vocal going forward. The party plans to introduce a shadow cabinet that McCartney says will be the DNA's voice for the various government ministries. The DNA plans to work with the government over the next five years to help move this country forward. However, McCartney says make no mistakes about it. His party will also hold the government's feet to the fire to make sure it lives up to its many promises. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonique Tood. Well, the Prime Minister is scheduled to attend a high-level meeting with the Chief Executive Officer of Cable and Wireless Communications this month to decide what will happen to the Bahamas Telecommunications Company. Charisma Robinson has more. While details remain sketchy at this time, it appears as if the government is indeed moving forward on its claim to revisit the idea of getting back controlling shares of BTC. In an interview with Guardian Business Today, BTC CEO Jeff Houston confirmed that they have some discussions planned with the government sometime in June. Houston says Tony Rice, the CEO of CWC, who was appointed to the top job in January 2010, will have direct dialogue with the prime minister. At this time, it is unclear whether the talks will happen in the Bahamas or in the UK where CWC is based. In April 2000, 2011, CWC gained a 51% stake in BTC for $204 million. The Progressive Liberal Party has remained a strong advocate for the possible renationalization of BTC since they swept into power in May. Recently, the Prime Minister declared that his government will remain faithful to its commitment to explore all lawful means by which majority ownership of BTC can be restored to the government and the Bahamian people. In a press conference today, Houston told reporters that the company is actively recruiting Bahamian talent and leadership. On the back of that, it's also created an opportunity to bring in some new skills into the business. So we're predominantly looking at new skills coming in in sales and marketing and product management and working in the new stores. And, you know, our commitment is, is always to, to look first for, for Bahamian talent locally. And even if that means that we have to like start, start, take more of a developmental pro approach, we bring new people in who may not be uh, well versed in the industry or the business or the technology, we are going to make that investment to train and develop. In fact, within the last six months, Houston says the company has hired 50 Bahamians to keep positions. The numbers of foreigners are actually predominantly working for our suppliers as we put in this new technology to install it for us to train our, our people here take on that challenge then of managing it and we have a very very small number of, of, of kind of active full-time employees who are foreigners in the business. Houston estimates that BTC's workforce is now 97 percent Bahamian. Reporting for MB12, I'm Charisma Robinson. Well, empty promises and empty pockets are what former employees of City Markets say they're left with as they await word on when their severance and pension payment will be handed down from Bahamas Supermarkets Limited. Workers staked out at, at a scheduled meeting at the Department of Labor this morning. Christina McNeil was there and she files more in this report. It's been about three months since hundreds of city market workers became unemployed. Since then, no severance nor pension packages have been paid out. 
Now those workers are threatening to march on Parliament unless they get their money soon. We are not begging, we are not asking for something that doesn't belong to us. You don't put in half, more than half, some of them put in more than half their life in the city market. You want people been in this company from they just came out of school. You understand? They ain't begging for nothing. Just if, you, if it's a penny, give it to us, that's ours. He say he for the people. Prove to me you are for the people. Give us our money. Help get our money. This is, and Sweden said, we don't, no, we don't get no good answers from here. We're going in the front of Parliament. So you all give me to stand and I have your number and I will call Channel 12. We will be going on Bay Street. Thirteen-year employee of City Market Alberta Ramming says it has been a struggle since the last City Market store was closed in April. While bills have been piling up, so have questions, as former employees of the troubled supermarket chain remain in limbo, unsure of when they will get their severance and pension payments. Back in April, President of Bahamas Supermarkets Limited, Mark Finlayson, said former employees would receive their severance pay once the chain sale to Super Value has been finalized. The conclusion of that deal was expected in May, but workers say they have yet to reap their bounty. Former inventory control auditor and employee representative Wance Law Turnquest says a 10 a.m. meeting was scheduled with Finlayson, other BSL officials and the Department of Labor. However, at 10.30, Finlayson was still a no-show. This is Turnquest estimates BSL owes employees about $3 million in severance pay. These employees are demanding some resolve to their pension. We have a meeting was called by the Department of Labor this morning. We have a, we had a already five meetings uh, pertaining to this matter and we have there has been no money uh, transacted between the company and these employees i have heard that uh, many persons in the matter have been solved the matter haven't been solved we're very thankful for the uh, 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 unemployment benefit that uh, helped to cushion some of the uh, liabilities for these employees these employees have major liabilities get to work these are the, these are citizens of the Commonwealth of the bahamas their rights must not be overlooked uh, uh, five years a very short time these persons have families don't underestimate people don't do not underestimate the people and the citizens of this country workers are also seeking to secure their pension an issue they're taking up with Winn Dixie there is currently a case before the courts as workers try to get their pension packages. However, Turnquest explains there's also a case in the United States in regard to employee pension funds prior to 2006. We have uh, uh, retained uh, uh, attorneys in the states uh, to uh, deal with Mendixie before the uh, before 2006 for the pension matter. We are going after all the money. We are going after the people's money. The pension fund is the people's money, and we are going to secure the people's money. I can assure you of that. We're going to get every single dime, every penny of the people's money. As a publicly traded company, TurnQuest says this should never have been allowed to happen. Meanwhile, unemployment benefits from the National Insurance Board for the unemployed workers expire next month. Calls placed to BSL President Mark Finlayson were not returned up to airtime. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil.